with those things in mind, um, knowing that. So one of the things, let me let me just back up a second here. You know, I, I've I've told many of you that this is this is my soul that's going to spend eternity somewhere, and I, and I base it on me. I'm not trying to force anyone to. I'm not trying to throw cast doubt on your belief and your faith, um, but I am going to tell you what I've found and what I've searched for and what I've asked God for and what He showed me. And so with that. Um, you could take it or leave it. You can continue believing what I truly believe is a lie, um, is a falsity, a deception that Jesus was talking about with man. Um, I do not see in this scripture where we've ever been told to go back to man. And so looking at that, Jesus never said it. Um, I'm still perplexed on a few things. Like, why um, or how could they have put these things in the Bible that are so contradictory to the words of Jesus? How could they canonize the, the 27 books that's in the, in, the, in the bindings of the New Testament today? Why would they put them in there? It's, it's confusing. It, it's, it's not honest. It's not truthful. It's it's totally um, going against its own self, and if you haven't seen that in the scripture, you're not reading it. And you may be you may be looking at it and and have your your religious filter on by what's being preached. And your I, I don't mean any disrespect to people, but when I say so called churches. It, it's it's man's domain. It's not God's. It was not his plan. You cannot show me it's God's plan in Jesus' words. And, and no, I'm not saying, oh, he didn't say this either, but that we know that. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about he never led anyone, his disciples especially, to, to believe that there was going to be a, a physical church or there was going to be a man in place that we would have to look up to. Now, the only thing that was there was the words of Peter, which I feel had to be there because Jesus or Peter was going to be on the other side for the new covenant written in the blood of Jesus. So, And I believe that, that through Peter, Jesus... Um, brought this plan of salvation, Acts 2 and 38 is what I'm referring to, uh, because Jesus in 3, uh, 1 through 9, or 3 through 9, whatever, you can read when he's talking to Nicodemus how we are to be saved of the water and of the Spirit, and we can't get to heaven without it. So we can't even see heaven without it. So that come from Jesus, and, and, and giving Peter the keys to the kingdom came from Jesus. I have to go on that. So with that and going on that, um, I can safely, I feel, can connect those things together. Now, when you look at the uh, First Peter, Second Peter, and these other books, um, it's widely believed, widely believed, and 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 I I gotta I gotta have some trust in these these folks, and I call them scholars, uh, but but. The, the the people that knew Hebrew, they knew Greek, um, they saw the 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 text, the uh, the writings. Um, they were among the people that translated these into English. Uh, so when you look at this, and 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 so there's been so much study on this throughout the years. Um, and I'm just taking too much time. I don't want to take that much time to get into this, but but when you look at those things. I felt, and I was looking to God, and God sees when you're hungry for truth, and and I could have went a whole nother path. I could have chose to ignore and go the easy route. I could have submitted to man. I could have said, you know, well, this this just the price you pay. 
you start over, you do whatever, and, and, and you make it work, right? No, no, there was a stirring in my heart. There was a stirring in my soul, and no, it wasn't rebellion, and that's, that's exactly what those that are still under the deception still claim that it is because that's what they want to believe and that's what they've been taught. It's nothing to do with rebellion. I wouldn't have gave eight grand in a matter of four months to a church <laughs> if there was any rebellion there. No, I don't believe in buying anyone off either. I truly thought that was the will of God um, in the sense of tithing, which I've come to know is a ruse, a ruse. And, and I, I, I just really think that no, I, I'm not, it's, that's not the subject today. But but the point is, is that there was some things that just wasn't right, things that just didn't feel right, didn't look right, and definitely was not right. So beginning the you know there's scripture, and we may touch on that. That's not you know so great of 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 uh, truth or or true writing today. But you know I have great timing, hundreds of hours of, of study in the New Testament, uh, King James Version. Uh, and I know many scriptures. Um, I mostly can recite most of the, the, the common things, anyhow, that most people uh, have heard preached, but neither here nor there. The, the point is I, I put the word of God in my heart like the psalmist said, that I might not sin against you, um, God. And so what I wanted to talk about here briefly, briefly, and, and I really want to get more into this study uh, with you, but I want you to know that that the, the and, and you could say all you want uh, when it comes to some of these, some of these things and the people that, that have, have um, let's see, uncovered, I'll say uncovered these things, um, but they're basically. Uh, let me let me go here. Um, there is a site called Pathos. dot com, uh, and this is where I got some of this stuff from. Um, I don't get it from just one source. I do look around and then I watch videos and things like that of where the Bible is written and stuff. Um, but do due diligence. It's just like everything else. There are things, man has tainted things to their direction of belief. Um, now, let me just tell you a little bit about Pathios real quick. Pathios is a non-denominational, non-partisan, so they say, online media, whenever they say that, and they, uh, you know, you might want to be suspicious, information commentary from various religious and non-religious perspectives, Right? That's what they claim in their own words. It's the premier online destination to engage in the global dialogue about religion and spirituality, to explore experiences of the world's beliefs. Okay, so I don't go with the go with the flow. Um, I have read, I have extensively read back and forth conversations that probably well into an hour's worth of 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 chats between scholars uh, going back and forth on various multiple topics and, and deep diving into these topics. And, and I don't, I'm not saying all this to say that, hey, listen to me, I know uh, you, you have to be just like me in the fact that you have got to seek this out for yourself. You have to know. You know why you have to know? Because it's your soul. It's your soul that one day is going to answer to Jesus. You're going to be judged by his word. He said, in the last day, you will be judged. My word will judge you. Um, so anyhow, um, one of the things that I saw was talking about, and I'll just say here, it says, basically, sorry, Christians, our Bible contains fake letters from Paul and Peter. And I, I searched this out. It, it didn't get some ad or whatever pop up. I did search this out um, and, and to, to get a consensus or at least other opinions to see if what I was feeling and what I, what I was understanding and what I really 
um, can't add up in the scriptures if there's any more to it that other people have noticed also. And lo and behold, that's where I found the Pathios. Uh, so anyhow, just bring this up real quick, but um, one of the articles, and, and I've put the the full um, URL down there uh, if you want to go there and, and look and read the full commentary, and I I <laughs> would, would, yeah, do it. That's what I got to say. Check it out. Uh, make your own determination. Uh, so it says, so which books of the New Testament are pseudopigrapha? I hope I'm saying that right. I think I am. And how did they get in there? Great questions. Let's take the first one. And then it says seven letters, seven letters. Bearing Paul's name are disputed among the scholars, namely Ephesians, Colossians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 and 2 Timothy, and Titus. Okay, so these are just a few of them. This is not, not full inclusive of all the ones that, that are uh, disputed. Um, but anyhow, pseudepigrapha is, is also called spurious. And what that means is not being what it purports to be or who it's written by, to be false or fake. Um, Second Peter, for instance, and I'll just throw that in there, is, is considered to be a fraud. Um, and you say, well, how, how, how do you know this? How, how do they know this? How can they say such things? You know, the Bible said all Scripture is given uh, from God, inspired by God through man. Well, what would you say if you wanted somebody to believe something like everything that you said? You might put a statement in there like that, right? And and let me tell you the era um, in which a lot of these uh, writings happened. Um were the fact that people would put other people's name, you ever heard of name dropping? Uh, they would, if, if it had a common or a, um, well, just, just like movie stars. If I, if I put something up on social media that said Taylor Swift, you would be more apt to read that then if I said Lonnie Perry, you would click on that because, hey, Taylor Swift, she's what's happening right now, right? So if I put something in there we call clickbait, then people are going to be more apt to pick it up, buy that book or whatever to read it, to look at the content. And that is exactly what was happening through these eras, that they wanted their uh, information out. They wanted to make a name for themselves, And if you get out of that um, filter, that lens of garbage, of religion, and you look at this thing and you, you seek God, not what man has to say about it, not their views, not some organizational, oh, we're proven and we're trying. No, they're not. They've been purporting lies for, for years. Yes, they, they're proven to be liars. So when you look at it, it says not being what it purports to be, false or fake, uh, separating authentic and spurious claims, bogus, fake, not genuine, or suspicious. Okay, so these are called Ephesians, Colossians, 1st, 2nd Timothy, Titus, and 2nd Thessalonians are known as the pastoral epistles. So with that pastoral epistles, we have, um, let's, let's look at one. Let's look at one that is something that I um, truly felt God show me that these things are not right. And when you go to Ephesians uh, 4 and 11, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. Well, 
do a search on your Bible software for pastor. There's only this is the only verse that will that will say a pastor, and a lot of them say, "Oh well, it's 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 elder, uh, sheep shepherd, whatever." All right, they they try to pass this off, but the point is, is this writer put in a pastor? The only other place that I'm aware of where it talks about God talks about pastors is in Jeremiah. And it's not good things that said about them, but that was the old law. That is in the old covenant, the old testament, as we call it. That was not Jesus. That was not the new covenant. The new covenant replaced the old covenant. And and many said, well, God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is, but the way he deals with man isn't. Did he yet, each each uh, generation, bring a flood? No, he didn't. So when you, when you look at those things, you're, you're not going to see those things happening because, no, what they're trying to tell you is that listen to what we have to say because this is what we believe, okay? So let's, let's go, continue on. For the perfecting of the saints, the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ— Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God into a perfect man and to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. See how they've 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 manipulated this. So the best thing you can do is you bring in someone, uh, such as Jesus. Um, if you look in the Gospels, um, you see where Jesus told Peter that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. So as you look at these things, and then you see where, oh, if I'm going to write about something, and if it's not Jesus, if I wasn't there when Jesus was there, and I'm talking particularly about Paul's writings or those that wrote those letters um, and, and, and included themselves in, in the fact that they uh, were eyewitness when these were copies of copies, so we don't have the original uh, text from these these uh, writings, um, and for most part, there's not very many that we even know who wrote these. Um, so, if you were to say, "Listen, you know," uh, in Paul's case, from what we know and what was written, is that he wasn't around when Jesus was was physically here on earth. So he he couldn't have been an eyewitness. He couldn't have been an apostle because the the apostles said that they one that was with us from the beginning, which Paul was not. Uh, but Paul claims to be an apostle uh, to the Gentiles. But that would have still been Peter because Peter was the only one with the keys to the gates of heaven. So um, you can't change that. Paul can't change that. Um, many believe he can, many believe he did, many believe Paul over Jesus, Paul over the original apostles. Um, so you look at those things, what I'm getting at here in this, this scripture is the fact that the fullness of Christ, they bring Jesus in, son of God, uh, body of Christ, uh, perfecting of the saints, which is the body of Christ. So they, they link and tie all this in to what people already believe to be true. And so they put apostles, he gave some prophets, some evangelists. That's why this is called the pastoral epistles, because they have changed these things to to set up a man's kingdom called a church, a building, someone that people can lead and look to man again instead of Jesus. So you look at that thing, and he gave some apostles. The apostles are all right. I'm not going to go in it. I really feel I always want to just go in and, and and break this down, but I'm not going to because I'm going to be time constrained with what we're talking about today. But when you look at that, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, then they call this the fivefold ministry. Bogus, very bogus. Jesus never mentioned anything about a fivefold ministry. I know what they're saying. They're like, oh, well, you're you're just whatever. No, I'm not. You're making more out of this fake scripture than anything else. 
And so I've already felt that these scriptures were not up and up. I already felt in my spirit that these scriptures could not be right because Jesus never validated or even talked about things like that. And, and when you look at that, you must, you really must. You know, we talked about Ananias and Sapphira last week. That, that, that was even, I don't even know what these people, Pathias says about Acts. I know people say Luke wrote it and all this stuff and, and, and wrote Acts and, and, and Luke. Um, but I can't find it within me in, in good conscience, and, and the Lord has not impressed on me that this is correct. So when you're looking at <laughs> what is implied here, that the Holy Ghost killed Ananias and Sapphira because they didn't give up their money to men. Now, this to me fits back into this pastoral epistle stuff. This, it, whether it was, it was and, and here's one of my theories, I'll just tell you straight up. If this was true, if this was, then, then either Paul or some other character from the writings that we have has manipulated the apostles, such as Peter in, in, in believing and such as Luke. Uh, these guys were servants of, of Paul. They, they, were, they were, Jesus told them, be not deceived by man. So I'm not saying, I, I can't tell you truth honestly, or no, I shouldn't say that. I would never lie to you anyhow, but I, I cannot say, I cannot affirm to you with, with credible backing that, you know, Paul wasn't on the up and up. I don't know if someone took the writings of Paul, if Paul actually wrote it, or somebody that he dictated to, right? I, I don't know if somebody later, because we don't have the original copy, we have copies of copies. That's all we have. We're, we're at least two copies removed from the original manuscripts where these came from. So I don't know that Paul was trying to insert himself in there or someone else. Um, because when you read about Paul in the book of Acts, he makes himself an apostle. He links that he went to get his eyes, um, his, his, his vision restored. That's the only link that we have. I see no links of anyone else that can validate Jesus appearing to him in Damascus. And so when you look at that, where's the link? Where is the proof? Um, and, and, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you got to go by faith. No, 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 no. That is not where faith comes in. I have faith in Jesus Christ. I don't have faith in man and the writings from man if it does not coincide with what Jesus both taught and what we know he said. Now, you say, well, isn't that also, uh, why aren't you skeptic about that? Well, here's where we are. If the words of Jesus, if the Gospels of what Jesus both did, said, and lived are not correct, then I guess you throw all hope away. For sure, none of the epistles after that is, is worth the paper they're written on. I said that last week. So if you want to believe in Jesus, then believe in Jesus. But if you're going to start out with Jesus and you're led away by Paul's writings and, and, and these pastoral epistles, which go directly against what Jesus taught, Jesus taught that you do not follow man, you follow Jesus. So this, this is a problem for, for many people because they're not following Jesus. They're only following man, and that's all they care about. But they say that they're following Jesus through man. That's not how it's done. That's never sanctioned by Jesus. So anyhow, again, I would advise you to look at some of these. Look at the scriptures. 
Jesus said, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. So when you look at Ephesians, Colossians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 2 Timothy, okay? So let, let me just read some of this here to, to give you an idea. And, and, and I, I, I really uh, would, would say you should go read this. You should take a look at this, this uh, read these things. And I'm not saying read them because you want to throw doubt on, on your faith. No, it's not about doubt on your faith. It's like being honest and being truthful and understanding what real truth is. So this, this, this writer says, I hope you're sitting down, maybe grab a stress ball or cuddle with your therapy dog. He said, New Testament is filled with epistles or letters that were not written by Paul or Peter. These are called pseudopigrapha because like other fake scriptures circulated in the late second and third centuries, they were not authored by the apostle whose name p appears on it. Okay. Um, uh, so when we look at the spurious, uh, we, we covered that. That, that basically is, uh, purports to be something that it's not. It's fake, right? Um, and, and there is consensus with many on, on varying beliefs that um, Second Peter um, is, is an imposter, uh, is a fraud uh, book. And you say, well, how do you know that? And I, I know I said that earlier, but the point is, is they look at era, uh, writings from other societies and other areas that were within that same time period, and certain words were never used until a later period of time. So this gives a lot of this away, and this is this is how they're able to say some of these things. And uh, so it's it's really irrefutable in a lot of ways that they've they've uh, came to this. Uh, so anyhow. Uh, several letters bearing Paul's name and disputed among scholars, namely, and we, we've already showed you that, uh, sharply divided whether or not Colossians and Second Thessalonians are genuine at all. But when it comes to Ephesians and the so-called pastoral epistles, that would be First and Second Timothy and Titus, this is talking about you know how how that you're you're supposed to be under man and all this stuff, and it's the hierarchical uh, junk that that. These churches are teaching, and they oh, it's in the Bible. You got to believe it. You know we're a Bible believing church. Oh, they're they're they want you to believe it because they benefit from it. But when you read chapter um, Matthew twenty three, and you see what Jesus had to say about the churches, the same religions that are here today, the same people involved, these 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 priests that that walk around and sit in high places, Jesus told them they're nothing but hypocrites. So that's what we have today, a bunch of hypocrites. Do you want to be involved in that? Do you want to be part of those hypocrites? So here, here he is. He's like, no one knows who wrote either 1 Peter or 2 Peter. But one thing almost every New Testament scholar agrees on, it probably wasn't the Apostle Peter, right? Um, so, but the good news is that we do have seven undisputed letters from Paul, and they, they, this is what, and again, I'm not taking all this to the bank. I'm not saying everything that these, these people are saying is a hundred percent true. Again, I know man always has an agenda. So, uh, maybe they, they, they feel like, Hey, you know, we've, we've hit it enough. Maybe we should just do some good in here. So the readers will, will say, Oh, well, they're not biased. You know, they played that game too. So maybe that's why they're coming back in and saying, oh, well, well, we think these are okay. We can't just be all bad. So you you really have to weigh these things. You have to read and know what Jesus said, what he did, what he purported, what was told about him, the eyewitness accounts of him. Two two of those books were not even apostles that, that, that gave this story. Um, and none of them were the writers of them. So, but... The point being, and, and, and there's a lot of controversy about that, say, no, well, they, they weren't smart enough to even know the language this good to write, write it that well and blah, 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 right? So there's, there's all kinds of stuff going on. But you have to lean on the Holy Ghost. You have to lean on God. You have to know what Jesus said and did. And, and, and if, if it's out of character from what you know about Jesus, and this is where I find my safety, 
My safety, I feel, is what Jesus said, red letter words of Jesus. What he did, uh, he, he came to cause no harm. He told us how to get to heaven and how to prevent ourselves from going to hell. And I feel, and I, this, I'm staking my soul on this, is the fact that I will adhere to what Jesus said. And if Paul gets off of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the wagon there, they get off of the, the, the path of what I know, uh, what Jesus said and, and, and what, what was told of him, then I don't believe him. And again, is it Paul? I don't know. It, did, did Paul uh, try to make himself of note? Was it Paul himself that did it? Was it another character that, that wrote this and said, you know, let's make Paul the hero. Who's this Jesus cat anyhow? Let's just make Paul the hero. And that's what it looks like in the book of Acts and his conversion and with King Agrippa and all this stuff. If you know, you know. You know what I'm talking about. You, you, you've got a parallel to Jesus that Paul's just everything as much as Jesus was. And the character of Paul is elevated. And, and when you look at that, that doesn't seem right to me. So was it Paul? I don't know. I don't know if it was Paul. I, I don't know if it's just the writers that, that wanted to make, make a thing of it. But it doesn't matter to me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it to what it is and, and what I feel is going to save my soul. So, again, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, I, yeah, that's, that's what Paul said. It doesn't mean he's right. Can you, can you connect that to Jesus? No. The gifts of the Spirit? No, there's, there's, there's no varying gifts. Jesus only spoke of one gift. That's the Holy Ghost. So if, if you don't have all those gifts within that Holy Ghost, and, and God can use you through that, one spirit, one faith, one baptism. So if you, God can't use that through that, then I don't know what he's talking about, and I'm not going to believe it. So in that, I, I'm just telling you that when we look at this, uh, so second question, how did these fake letters from Paul and Peter end up in our Bibles? And it goes on to say, well, it's easy because the Christians who decided which books were in or out of the canon around 400 AD didn't make their decision using textual criticism. Usually the decision was made by consensus or based on opinions. So in fact, in some cases, they just prayed and waited for God to move the scrolls that were not authentic onto the floor. This is, the, and the writer says, nope, I'm not making that up. Uh, so still other decisions about the canon, like the Council of Trent, 1546, were nearly too close to call, with 24 yeas, 15 nays, and 16 abstaining from the votes. So uh, it could have gone either way. Um, the guy says he supposes. Maybe a qu better question is, why do some Bible scholars today doubt these letters of Paul and Peter? This could take a long time. So if you're interested in the gory details, I'm right reading what this guy's saying, and you can go online and, and read this for yourself. Um, so here is, he, he's like, you, you can go, and, and he recommends you Googling disputed letters of Paul or Peter and start reading down, heading down the rabbit hole, reading the conversations. And this is like I was telling you earlier. This is what I did with a couple scholars. I read their back and forth arguments one to another as why they believed a certain thing and the other one didn't believe it. And and they both gave their sides of the story, kind of like a courtroom, right? And 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 they tried to show why they did it. And it if you go and look at some of these, it it very well gives you a good understanding of, of how some of these things are the way they are. And when you start feeling that spirit in, in you from God to say, this just doesn't feel right. Why would Paul be saying this? Why would they put you back in a church under man when Jesus said nothing about it and, and Jesus was against it and his, his, his greatest warning was against man deceiving you? So why would, would that happen? Well, it didn't according to Jesus. So these things here, after the fact, after I felt these, these disturbing things that the Lord 
brought to my attention. Um, then is when I begin to look. So God dealt with me, and then I searched it. And I come to find today, for instance, um, this, this Pathios. And, and here I've read about it, and it's like, yeah, there you go. You know, so when God tells you, he will come back and, and confirm to you what he was talking to you about. So just just in this, and I, I again, I recommend that you, you go read this, Summary of Reasons to Doubt Pauline Authorship of Ephesians, okay? Language and the style are different. Um, and I'm not going to read all this stuff, uh, but there's there's words inserted in there like heavenly places, family, fatherhood, and and these these kind of words weren't really in the in the mainstream of any other writings during these timelines. And this is the kind of thing that that these um, uh, authors of of talking about this stuff is 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 dealing with, and that's that's why they're questioning credibility of, of these books. And so, rightly so. And again, like I said, when, when God leads you and God shows you that, you know, it doesn't seem right. When they're, they're up just constantly driving on money and this and that, and, and yet our church isn't giving to the community and stuff. And, and again, it goes way deeper than what your church is doing because I don't even feel like that's sanctioned by Jesus to begin with. I don't have any problem with people meeting up together, but the church as a governmental uh, agency is is not godly. It is not, you know, you say, well, the Old Testament. We're not in the Old Testament. Jesus did not go to the Sanhedrin court. He did not go to the high priest and, and the, 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 the religions of that day and go in there and, 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 and make a plea to them and say, listen, guys, you know, God sent me here. This is what we got to do now. I don't want y'all being offended. Uh, you know, I just need you to get on board with this because it's coming straight from God. And I need you to understand that and get behind this. No, that's what, a, that's what one of your fake pastors would do and say, right? And that's what your uh, organizations would do. But Jesus came on the scene, didn't introduce himself to any of these people. He went and picked 12 apostles, come follow me. I will make you fishers of men. That's what he told Peter and Andrew. And then, as you know, the rest of the story, you can read it in the Gospels. But as he went through, he did not go and say, hey, I need your approval. But see, that's what you need today. You need, you need your church. You need that pastor. You need that congregation to accept you finally and say, oh, you're, you're saved just like us. You're one of us now. You know, God blessed you, you know. They, they, you kiss, kiss the ring of the pastor. You got to kiss that ring. There's the big ruby ring. You kiss it. And that's, that's exactly what's happening today in your religion, in your churches today, your physical man-made kingdoms on earth. That is exactly. Now, you, you know what? They can act as, as, as uh, humble as they want. They can act like, oh, you know, I don't, I don't want y'all to, I just want you guys to look into it. You know, you'll see all that. And, 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 you know, they're, they're just smooth. And even, even some of them ain't trying to be smooth. They're just led by another source. And they don't even know it themselves because they have chose not to believe the truth. And God said he would send strong delusion that they should believe a lie. I don't think that's, that's tribulation stuff. I think that's today. I think that's the religion of our day. These people think that they are serving God. They're doing God a service. And I'm coming to you today to tell you they're not. They're doing you a disservice because they're pulling you away from a relationship with Jesus Christ. And, and, and they are, are, have replaced God in your life with their self, with their own hierarchical uh, business models. So, as, as again, it said, a vision takes many ideas from Colossians, wisdom, mystery, the word truth, gospel of salvation, saints of God. A lot of these things are introduced in some of these books that are not era specific. So this is why they feel uh, the metaphors, illustrations of Paul uh, turned into uh, objective realities, sometimes in Colossians, 
Uh, they're they're pulled from the other scriptures during that time, um, and it shouldn't be in the time that they say that they were found. So so these these different things, and you know, this is just things that you're going to have to deal with, cope with, or you can ignore it and and you know just just throw the dice and and see see where you end up with God. That's up to you. That's your choice. But today, this is my choice to go through, and, and, and I am clinging more to the red-letter words of Jesus than I've ever clinged in my life. And anything outside of those bounds, anything that, that, that doesn't feel right, and I don't mean feel right to my flesh, I'm talking about if Jesus didn't say it, Jesus didn't do it, Jesus didn't promote it, I'm not there with you. So... When, when, when you tell me, when I read in the Acts 5th chapter, that Ananias and Sapphira, uh, Christians and people, I, I've heard it. I, I watched a couple of these pastors on, on videos talking about Ananias and Sapphira. I was like, oh, let's see what they have to say. Let's see how they can twist this around. And they're like, well, you know, we, I, I don't really think they were good Christians. I think they were new to this. And I'm like, okay. Obviously, they made it in the Bible, so they must have been somewhat of a Christian because